tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Comment what you're doing now. Um, I'm currently a senior at the Ateneo de Manila Senior High School. I am under the Humanities and Social Sciences stand, and I am the Public Relations Officer of Sigea. So my task mainly revolves around heading the PR team, handling external affairs of the organization, and managing Sigea's official email. Okay, so you mentioned now you're still in high school. So if I may ask, how old are you? I'm 17. 17 okay yeah so of course i knew she was 17 but i wanted to let you guys know that um tatiana here is i think the second youngest guest that i second or third maybe that i had on making a difference so you could really see that even the younger generation um they're really um lending their hand that, that makes sense so um what do you do as the public relations officer for Sigea? For Sigea, um, I, so when I handle the official email of the organization, I come up with drafts, I come up with the sponsorship letters when contacting needed personnel, and I also um, bring onto the core executive table the proposals that we receive from various organizations who might want to coordinate and um, have a well, partnership. prior to Sigea, I'm also a part of another uh, youth-led organization. And then um, when I was starting to get into um, youth orgs, I saw that Sigea had an opening for this position. And um, prior to this, I was mostly within the content writing um, committees. So this is something new for me as well. And I wanted to challenge myself and try something different for a change. Uh, okay. organization start. So, Sigea was founded in 2019 by our founder, Jean Francis Serrano, who was influenced by her grandfather. So, she was driven by the purpose to spread awareness and influence modern-day environmentalism. So, she she founded Sigea in hopes to provide um, attainable and sustainable solutions to making a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... Um... So she started in 2019. Now, um, what do you, what is your, what is the organization's pinaka mission or vision if you guys have? We operate under three core values. That's accountability, innovation, and discovery. So with accountability, we believe that with action, um, there comes, our actions reflect the choices that we make in our everyday lives. So. Mm -hmm. um, with this, we through our materials and projects, we want to share the same responsibility we have for the environment with others through our platforms, which are we have a we have um a website and we're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Okay. And okay, um, we also want to encourage creativity, and with the creativity, we're also driven by research. So, mm -hmm. um. We want to learn more about sustainability because we believe that this this growing field it it has endless possibilities for the future. Okay, what so you made you want to join Sigea? Personally, I wanted to join Sigea for for the exposure because um, I in in my school I was more devoted on the athletic side and. Now, since I'm unable to really uh, train as much, I decided to um, broaden my advoca advocacies because mm -hmm. uh, some of mine personally are for PWD, for the LGBTQ community, and for education. So the environment and environmental conservation is also something that's very close to my heart because my family comes from the Bicol province. and mm -hmm. We, we lived near the sea, so seafood was a big part of growing up as well as being surrounded by lush greeneries, which I hope to preserve for the future generations to enjoy. Okay, so um, were you born here in Manila or you were born in Bicol? I was born in the United States, actually. Oh, okay, so wala yo. Okay. What made you, what, was, what made you think that way, na parang... 
was there an instance that oh because of this we really need to start preserving or taking care of the environment was there um, like that light bulb moment did you have that <laughs> I think it was when I started to be more aware of the items that I use. Because when you usually when you enter high school, you get allowance or even before. But of course, you you start to devote it to different things. Like oh, I want to go out with my friends. I I want to buy this certain item. So it with me, it really came up with fashion. So we we know now that a lot of the big brands. The famous brands that everybody buys they change their collection every season and this requires a lot of um this is fast fashion so they easily they come up with different products just for them to discard the next season and it encourages this um culture of buying to throw away to buying then throwing away so this kind of practice it really it, it really struck me because uh knowing that there are social issues underlying social issues behind it as someone who's in the humanities and social sciences and this is something that i really studied in detail in the ateneo so i've manifested um this advocacy in other ways i also run a thrift shop an online thrift shop because i wanted to at least within my near community encourage more sustainable living greener economies and um less of using unnecessary amounts of materials mm-hmm. and prolonging the the life of textile wear. Mm-hmm. That's great. You're really keeping yourself active. <laughs> I don't want to use the word busy, but you're you're doing a lot, which is really really great and congrats. I, on- because of I only started it recently, so it was a bit difficult to um source the material since I couldn't go out. But I was able to get um, a few pieces, and they surprisingly did well. The first collection did well, and this was followed by pre-loved clothing, which I've coordinated like with my friends. Like, oh, is there anything that's in your closet that you don't you don't want to wear anymore? Then I can sell it for you. So it's going to be like sort of a consignment. So it's a win-win. They remove things that they no longer need. We split the cash. It's all good. So other than that, uh, my thrift shop has also partnered with. Different um, fundraising drives. Mm-hmm. So I've I've worked with two. The first one was to raise funds for students who are unable to continue their education because they don't have gadgets for online learning. So um, that that was the first one. The second one it was um, excuse me for uh, raising funds for farmers. And the third one that I'm working on right now is for the victims of the recent typhoon. Wow! Congratulations. You know, I'm, I'm really like seeing uh, while you were you were telling. What have um, you done? What are the projects that you have done so far? Well, in the past, we have held multiple webinars, and they tackled different subjects such as breaking away from mm-hmm. fast fashion, sustainable food and eating, as well as the importance of a zero waste lifestyle. And we also had an IGTV series entitled Revamp, wherein we invited different influencers to show ways on how to upcycle various items as a way to practice sustainable living. Uh, the the first project that you mentioned um, was that the very very first project you guys had as Sigeya. Uh, actually, the first project Sigeya had was the tree planting activity that they did for Marikina River Basin so they collaborate we collaborated with DNR for that okay so where was the event it where? was held at Marikina River Basin that's what i know because i only joined Sigea um in june so this was a uh, a past past project. okay yeah i was going to ask you actually when you joined okay so you joined june june of Sorry, this year or last year? This year. This year. Okay, I see, I see. And then, um, so now, um, do you have any upcoming projects for Sigea? Um, we actually are going to put a hold temporarily to um, 
projects that we would usually do because we're going to redirect our efforts to creating a long-term solution for the victims of the typhoon. So this will be a, it's a multi-phased project, which um, it's because we acknowledge the fact that the donation drives and the relief efforts being done right now, those are only short term. Mm-hmm. And what we plan to do is to uh, create a, a long-term solution to, ca- to combat the threat of chi- climate change. So this would entail um, research like before. And what we plan to do is to, like the first phase would be the research part. And the next phase would be, um, it's about land healing. So this is wherein we will apply the research about who we can consult with, experts in the field that we can talk to with regards to what what areas um, what areas could have not have experienced as much damages if there were more trees in that area, and in that area, what type of trees? Because we because there you know um, you can't just introduce a new tree into into a specific area. It has to be something native to the land in order for it to not um, harm the ecosystem that's already there, and um it doesn't stop there land healing isn't the end goal after that we still have to coordinate with the lgus so we have to we're gonna write letters to our local governments um because political will requires public support so we believe in collaboration and talking with the local government on how can on how we can shift to a more long-term and sustainable solution so we want to bridge the gap between research and action okay do you have a target area already for this do you have any future plans um, as an organization um, as an organization we also want to help collaborate and bring uh, employment opportunities for those who are affected by the typhoon so given that we've already been in contact with different businesses in the past we hope to call them again and ask if there's any way that they can extend um, assistance or give jobs, which is a more sustainable and long-term uh, solution to the problem. Okay. And how about you, Tatiana? Do you have any future plans with the Gea? Or is there something that you see yourself doing for Code Green? On a personal note, uh, I I'm not sure because I my term runs on a six month uh, timeline, and it's I'm supposed to renew by around Feb, and mm-hmm. as a senior, I'm also about to graduate graduate high school. So it it really depends how things map out. We I, of course I really hope that next year we can look on to better things. And if time and availability permits, I hope to, of course, continue working with Sigea because I really enjoy um, I really enjoy my work here. So as much as possible, I hope to keep going at it, of course. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you see yourself growing there, then why not? Speaking of, um, do you... Uh, well, okay, maybe not right now, but eventually, are you? Is the organization open to accepting volunteers or members? Let's say somebody's watching right now, and that person is just like, "Oh, I, is I, the organization open to accepting volunteers or members?" Let's say somebody's watching right now, and that person is just like, "Oh." I, I mean I feel like I wanna I wanna join Code Green. Are you accepting? Yes, very much so. We will be looking for volunteers in the future, especially for the actual tree planting, because of course, um, not everyone can exactly go to these remote areas. So of course, it would be better to locally source that within that area. So um, the audience can of course stay tuned through our various platforms you'll be able we will be um releasing of course a a call for applications or volunteers very soon once everything has been finalized but if you are interested in joining sigea 
you can check our website. There's this um, contact us tab wherein you could send us an email saying you're interested and what the next steps could be if you really want to pursue working with us here. Okay, so where can they contact Shigea? Where can we find you? Are you on um, Facebook and Instagram? You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. You just have to search Code Green Youth Environment. Yes, Association yeah. Sigea. And um, we all you can also contact us via email. That's sigea22 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can find all of our contact details on our website. That's just on sigea.org. I think okay. the importance of sustainable living is that it isn't even a choice anymore. It's a necessity. So mm -hmm. we should be able to support our own needs without compromising the, the ability of future generations to meet their own. So mm -hmm. with me, um, this was really integrated early on. So before Ateneo, I came from Miriam College. Mm -hmm. And Miriam College is known to be a dark green campus. We're surrounded by a lot of trees. And like many um, private schools, we did not in enjoy the luxury of having aircon 24 7. So we were also taught like how to segregate your trash and stuff like that. So that was like the, the most basic of it. That's the that's the beginning of it. But as you grow older, of course, you begin to adopt more responsibilities. And as someone who's approaching adulthood, there's gonna come a time when I have to provide for myself and take into account my own needs without relying on anyone else. So I want to be able to live my life knowing that my needs didn't compromise anyone else's. And um, of course, sustainable living is very difficult to um, transition to all at once. So it, it really it's a step-by-step -step, um, process wherein you, you just have to start. And like mm -hmm. I said, it's, if we integrate it early on into children, then it won't it won't have to be a choice anymore, but rather a necessity that we are already able to um, live in because it's something that we grow up with. How do you take that step to transitioning into sustainable? Uh, you take that step by using what you already have. People like to assume that Oh, sustainable living means having um, all those uh, reusable utensils, the reusable straw, having your um, water bottle. That's not it. Um, you actually begin when you remember to turn off the lights when you're not using your room. It's when you're brushing your teeth and you turn off the tap. It's um, choosing to use a pail and um, the tabo instead of, of a shower because must you you can calculate the water the water that you use more so it starts with your how you handle your basic necessities to address your basic needs so it doesn't even involve spending at all and i think I, at least within most filipino households we already have a head start at that with the way that we collect plastic bags the way yeah. we collect empty ice cream cartons yeah. That's already a step in itself. And if you think that you haven't made the step to sustainable living, maybe you have. And maybe you can already start thinking a level higher. A level higher would be how you address uh, fashion, um, makeup, and maybe fashion, makeup, household items. Mm -hmm. So like I said, with fashion, that's like, stop supporting um, fast fashion brands. Do your research before you pay, you buy certain clothing. Mm -hmm. And also, do you really need it? So just because it's on sale doesn't mean you have, you have to buy it. And with makeup, um, there are a lot of brands right now that offer free, uh, like, a discount if you um, mm -hmm. bring your old um, containers and just opt for a refill. So that's mm -hmm. another way that you can reduce the waste that you produce mm -hmm. and another thing is like with the use of like tools so you don't really need the tools like for example there's this issue about the 
the metal straw. So why are you using a plastic straw? You should just use the metal straw. Maybe we should in maybe we should like stop asking which straw is better and just think we really need the straw instead. So just just drink your drink without any kind of straw and I think you'll be fine. So that's that's that for me. So you have to evaluate and you have to check the projects that you see on the market. You should also check the materials and the ethical considerations that were used in making these items. And you have, most importantly, you have to identify whether it's an urgent need in your day-to-day -day living. So when you go out to buy something, just have a list and stick with the list. On a monthly newsletter wherein oh we invite um, different businesses tackling the the theme we had in mind. Like recently, we had sustainable eating. Before that, we had um, marine preservation or something like that. So mm. we we send due to the um, the unavail unavailability of some people, we give them interview questionnaires and then we ask them how how are they able to implement such practices within their company. And I think this is really a way for us to really um, see whether or not they are a sustainable company because many of them are, many companies are choosing to come off as sustainable when in reality they aren't. So that's that's greenwashing. So with that, um, we are really able to probe deeper into more in what they actually are other than what they present themselves to be within their own marketing strategy, strategies. Okay. with a list of companies that um, that are sustainable and then they're handed over to the PR team and we're the ones who contact them. If they agree to participate in the newsletter, that's when we send them the questionnaire and then after that, um, research comes up with an article about them and then the newsletter itself is shown on our on our online platforms and our, on our website. And let's say you're there. Okay, okay. For example, na lang yan. let's say it was really, really big. Um, you're already a very big company with hundreds of employees and all that. How do you, ano kaya? How should you maintain um, that sustainability? How do, ikaw, what do you think? How can you maintain that? Well, as the, like, with regards to thrifting, kasi these are like, the options of people who can't actually afford to go to fast fashion brands so um it would be unfair for me to even grow that big considering that this is actually um the only option for some people because of how cheap the prices are so with regards to sustain being sustainable in my business um i have to like take a step 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 back and really think that nah, is it it's is it really um is it really for others anymore if i continue to grow that big without taking into account those people who really need the products without the additional price that i charge for curating these items so i think being sustainable in that matter is really um it mainly resides with me and my personal values. Well, eating? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, sustainable eating is, um, it's sort of integrating a more vegetable-based diet. So, um, the thing I say with meat, uh, generating around a kilogram of meat would require a, a ton lot of water. So, that's a lot of um, resource and water that's being put into just for us to consume and of course um in the agriculture agricultural side um farming in general that also contributes to greenhouse gases as well as the pesticides that are being used that's another form of pollution so when you look at sustainable eating it's it really leans toward a more plant-based diet a more vegan diet and by choosing to make the switch you're saving a lot of water and you you actually um enjoy a lot of benefits from the quality of the food that you consume from it okay are you vegan 
Um, I really want to be, but because I share a household with other people, I can't make the switch yet. But little by little, and hopefully in the future, I hope that I can. Slowly, no advice yeah. that you want to give to the viewers out there or any um, words of encouragement um, to those who are watching YouTube today or any other. Um, a really uh, a frequent question that uh, most speakers or most organizations get is that how can we influence others? Like, okay, I'm on board with it, but how can I influence like my family, my friends? Mm. Well, because usually it's met with res- with resistance. Not like, oh, I can't give up meat, or oh, but I love this certain brand too much. Yes. Well, um, any type of resistance should be met with understanding and followed by um, you like educating them about it. So if you yourself, you're already immersed in and committed to a more sustainable living, then share what you know with them and share the effects, share, share the, the reality of it, that if we don't make the switch now, it's, it's going to fa- catch up to us in the end. Great. And if you're looking on a more concrete and action-based one, then you can start gifting them with like sustainable items or suggesting brands when they ask oh where's a nice place that i can buy this or like that and when you suggest these sustainable brands you're supporting local businesses and you're also um you're drawing them in as well like if they like this product then they're gonna they're gonna come back and it's gonna be a chain reaction that they too can recommend to their family and friends Oh, I like that. Thank you so much. Tatiana. Contacting okay. us, it would be easiest to uh, visit us on Facebook and Instagram. You can just search Code Green Youth Environmental Association or Sigea, or you can contact us via email at sigea22 at gmail.com or um, send us a message through our website under the contact us section. Uh, my organization called the Helping Hearts Organization is partnered with the Sangguniyan Kabataan of our barangay, Barangay Ayala Alabang, and of course, our barangay. We are actually um, doing an online seminar called How to Cope During the Pandemic. So it is a mental health awareness webinar series. Actually, today is the third and last session na, uh, for this series. But you can actually still join. Just go ahead and register in the Barangay Ayala Alabang Helping Hearts Organization Facebook page. So, nakapin. This poster is actually nakapin. And um, you can register there. Sa, um, you can register there sa link. There's like a, there's like a Google form there. Then, you can register because when you register, you will actually be getting a uh, certificate. So it starts at 4.30. So actually, after this, you will see me there in that webinar series. Again, it's open to all ages. Today, we will be talking about balancing online and real life amid the pandemic. And I forgot to mention that our speakers pala for this is actually the um the what do you call this the mentors from life risks so life risks was actually a guest here on making a difference episode the last episode of season that is partnered uh we my organization is partnered with um um pagha uh pagahon ng luzon so again my organization barangay alabang helping hearts organization partnered um, with the De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, uh, the Institutional Student Council. And then we're also partnered with the University of Santo Tomas College of Education Student Council. And um, we basically, we are accepting donations. Um, this is still ongoing. Uh, they. Our main goal here 
is to really uh, provide hygiene kits for a total of 750 families. So this is done also pala with Project Capua. Now those 750 families, so we have some in Laguna, in Cavite, Camarines Norte, and Camsur. Um, so we have a target fund that we're trying to reach. So if you want to donate to um, this drive, you can check out Project Capua on Facebook and they're also on Instagram as well. And then of course, uh, my organization is also promoting that. We are actually going to release another um, collateral later at 6 p.m. So again, if you want to know more about uh, any all the updates sa uh, pag-ahon ng Luzon Donation Drive, you can check us out also and um yeah so those are the stay tuned for the next episode only here on v81 radio manila